Well, it's Friday night, and you know what that means? It's Friday Night Bourbon Fight! Welcome to Bourbon Riders and another Friday Night Bourbon Fight. And who's fighting tonight? Bib and Tucker, six year, versus the challenger, Whistle Pig, six year. So, um, let's get into these bourbons, shall we, a little bit? So what do we know about the combatants? Well, Whistle Pig is famous for its rye whiskeys. And uh, knowing friends that drink and like the Whistle Pig, a while back I got the uh, their bourbon. This is their first version of a bourbon. Uh, it is 100 proof. Um, and it's, you know, they want to venture into that market because they're, they're pretty popular in the, in the rye side of it. Uh, Bib and Tucker has gotten a lot of notoriety. It also was a six-year bourbon and uh, also a small batch. And it's a little bit lower proof at 92. So when I tasted the uh, Whistle Pig before, and this has been months, I really wasn't that impressed with it. So I kind of put it off the side. You can see that the bottle, for, for the most part, has not been drank much. But I've learned that your palate changes, and I've had several bourbons that I've done a second pour on, or second sip on, and I'm going like, wow, that, that's actually pretty good. We're bringing the Whistle Pig out of mothballs to go up against one of my daily sippers, uh, a bourbon that I, I really like. If you go to the uh, whistlepigwhiskey.com website, you can uh, see what I'm seeing here. It basically talked about it being a high corn mash bill. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, keeping a dash of rye, of course, in there. Uh, six years in char number three barrels, uh, bottled at 100 proof. And that it says it's uh, you can sip it neat or shake it in a classic. They say on the palate, maple and vanilla with a creamy mouthfeel. Now, normally that would be great for me. I don't remember that, but it's been so, it's been so long since I've tasted it. I I couldn't tell you what it tastes like. What does Bib and Tucker say about the taste? It says it enters the palate smoothly, and the bourbon is nicely balanced with a hint of pecan pie sweetness. That sounds really good. I mean, does the bourbon really taste like pecan pie? I don't remember it tasting like that, but it's interesting how people write up these descriptions of the uh, tasting profile. So we're going to uh, move the bottles over, get everything in place, and get right into round one. Ding, 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 round one. It's all about the aroma. So we'll start uh, with, uh, on our right, glass B, and see what it smells like. It smells like a traditional uh, brown sugar bourbon. Um, sweet, some molasses brown sugar going on there. Maybe a little bit of oak. Nice, nice. I mean, very typical bourbon, uh, mature smelling, very nice what I like in most of my bourbons. As if you watch this show, I like a uh, sweet smelling, sweet tasting, brown sugar, maple, molasses type bourbon. That's my favorite. Over to uh, glass A. Give it a little swirl here. Well, this is really different. I really don't smell any sweetness, uh, any traditional bourbon aroma. Almost uh, like a, um, more like a medicine you get out of your medicine cabinet. It's got an unusual aroma. Uh, not a fan of this aroma at all. So we're going to have to uh, give a score here. Oh, 
All right. Ding, ding, ding. It's now all about the taste. Uh, in this round, uh, the points double, and each contestant can get up to 10 points. So we started with the uh, glass B on the right. This time we'll start with glass A on the left. Give another swirl again. Cheers. Some spice up front and a uh, I do taste some fruit but I, I can't tell you what that fruit is it's not very sweet uh, maybe citrus um, but then that that medicine that I was uh, or aroma that I was picking up uh, kind of came across in the palate came across in the taste it's uh as some reviewers like myself call it a funk and funk not necessarily a bad thing but when you can't identify what it is you call it a funk there's some kind of funky taste in here i need to come back to it all right now to glass b the one that had the better aroma Cheers. Night and day difference. It's got a little bit of spice up front. Uh, your traditional bourbon flavors, your brown sugar, molasses, it's sweet. You've got some dark fruits going on there. Um, a little bit of Kentucky Hug going on. Now, I did get a little bit of Kentucky Hug going on with Glass A, I forgot to mention. But this is like miles apart. Wow. That is a good sipper. It really is. All right. Well, I need to give uh, Glass A another shot. Everybody deserves a second chance, including Glass A. We'll swirl again. Get some flavor in there, guys. Definitely more peppery spice on the tip of the tongue. But the flavor just isn't there. I wish it was. It's um, it's not good. It, that, that funkiness comes across in not a good way uh, if it's citrus it needs to be sweeter more defined um, it may be a six-year-old bourbon well we know it's a six-year-old bourbon right both of them are six-year-old bourbons uh, it does not taste six years it uh, it tastes like something you get that's two years or one of those Solera processes where they take a very young bourbon and mature it through the process and make it taste older. It just, it tastes like a very young, immature bourbon that is not ready for prime time. Back to glass B. Oh, that is good. That is lick your lips good. It seems to have just the right combination of baking spice in the front, that sweet fruitiness in the palate that uh, goes back and uh, leaves you wanting more. So, uh, we're going to score this round, but it's going to be different than any other bourbon fight that we've done because the score is glass B1 via technical knockout. There is no comparison in the taste, not even close, not miles, or should I say it's miles apart. This is a good sipping bourbon with traditional bourbon flavors. 
everything you'd want in a good bourbon. I'm not sure what this is. If it's bourbon, it's not a good bourbon. Whoever made this needs to go back to the drawing board. This is not good. I suspect that this is the Whistle Pig, and I suspect because I drank enough of the Bib and Tucker that I know what I like when I drink it. That's the Bib and Tucker. There's no doubt in my mind that this is the Whistle Pig, and my first impression of it is still my impression of it. It's not a good bourbon. I expected more from Whistle Pig. And to confirm that I'm right, we're gonna go to my lovely assistant's notes. She left it on the back page. A is Whistle Pig, B is Bib and Tucker. B. And A. I respect what Whistle Pig has done in the rye market. People love their product. And I understand that this is their first version of a traditional bourbon. So, Whistle Pig, go back and let me know when you come out with a new one. This is not ready for prime time. The Bib and Tucker, well, I, I can't say enough good things about it. Now, I know that some people say it's sourced bourbon. I don't know that to be true, and I don't care. A good bourbon is a good bourbon. I don't care if it comes from MGP, or if it comes from Buffalo Trace, or it comes from Jim Beam. A good bourbon is a good bourbon. If you like it, it doesn't matter where it's distilled. All that matters is you have it and it's in your glass. So we hope you liked today's bourbon fight. Uh, sorry I didn't go all three rounds, but uh, I always said if there was, if, uh, if a bourbon got obliterated in the tasting round, game over. And in this one, game over. Bib and Tucker is the champ. So please like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. And always remember, never drink and drive. Always drink responsibly. And we'll see you next time.